You booked it, episode 197. What's going on everyone? Thank you for joining me today on You Booked It, the number one podcast where you learn how to create a successful entertainment career. Have you joined the You Booked It community yet? It is your go-to entertainment career resource. Inside, you'll have direct access to Broadway performers, Emmy nominees, and people just like yourself navigating this industry. Learn from those walking the walk. Build industry relationships, access unlimited masterclasses, and learn how to book the job more consistently. Join free today, tap the link in the show notes, or go to youbookedpodcast.com forward slash invite to get inside. And now, let's meet today's guest. Okay, let's get this started. I am stoked to introduce my guest today, Constantine Maroulis. Are you ready for this, Constantine? I am ready. All right. Constantine was born a scrappy kid in Brooklyn with big pipes, deep pride for his Greek heritage, and a love for the theater and rock and roll. He first came to prominence as the beloved rock and roll underdog on American Idol. He then secured his place in pop culture as a Broadway superstar, best known for his Tony-nominated role in Rock of Ages. Now, for his third act, he begins an invigorating and promising new era with a bevy of intriguing pre- Projects, including putting the finishing touches on his most assured and swaggering solo music to date. Constantine, that was a quick intro of who you are and what you've done, but why don't you tell us a little bit more about yourself, fill in the gaps, and a little bit more about what you do as a professional in the entertainment industry. Thank you, Dane, and thank you for having me. I hope everyone in in your family and your friends over there in Australia, I believe, you're broadcasting yeah, that's right. from... Yeah, I mean, you guys are doing a lot better, I think, than we're doing over here with all of this. So it's been <laughs> it's been a crazy 14 months, for sure, and quite revealing in so many ways personally. And I've been working very hard to just keep my family safe and stay busy with work and some cool projects. But, um, you know, I think definitely growing up in a big Greek household, just focusing on family and those things that are most important to me helped me get through all of this. I'm definitely leaning on my heritage, my, my background, my upbringing, blue collar roots, born in Brooklyn, New York, raised in New Jersey. Definitely a survivor, you know, always have been. Lost my first cousin in the World Trade Center and devastated my family. So it feels like in a way navigating COVID was, it was like a deja vu experience, you know, not yeah. to be a downer, but it felt like wow, I feel like we've been here before. I feel like we've been at this precipice of is the sky falling and leaning on my art, leaning on my work to not only get me through this, but to hopefully lift up others and provide an escape, a bit of magic in their lives. You know, as we get through this really difficult time in our existence, really, we're just a little blip in the in the galaxy. But, you know, for us, this is about as big as it gets. I don't know if we'll ever encounter something like this again. So for me, in a way, all of my experiences have led me to this 2020 and 2021 or half of 21 time period. So, you know, I'm the youngest of three. I have a pretty big extended family 24 first cousins on one side oh, um, geez. but i'm the only one who really does this my brother is a performer he's put out lots of records ethan marulis so you can look him up he's had a prolific career but we're very different but i just worshipped him when i was a kid we're 11 years apart he's much older than me and uh, definitely a big influence on me my, my sister was into all kinds of cool records and music when I was a kid. And my parents were always older than my friend's parents and always working. But, you know, we watched movie musicals as when I was very young. I had some recollection of that, of the five of us actually in a family room together watching Wizard of Oz or West Side Story and uh, huge influences on me for sure. Yeah, very cool. Well, let's dig into this first section here. And Constantine, look, I am a sucker for a good quote. What is your <laughs> favorite quote you'd like to share with everyone? 
Oh, my favorite quote. Wow. Put me on the spot. Um, I think don't ask me where I'm going. Listen when I'm gone and far away. You'll hear me singing softly to the dawn. I think that is from Pippin. (laughs) But I I always liked that. There are so many cool quotes in that. And I think it just Pippin just happened right at that age for me, 12, 13 years old, where I was like, wow this is so cool. I kind of want to do this. I think, you know, it's like straight guys that like rock and roll and movies and sports could also really love to be a part of musical theater. And I think that is pretty cool. And I prided myself on being someone open doors and broken down stigmas and even being a part of the creative process of bringing Rock of Ages to the world. I think we invited an audience to our show that has never entered a Broadway theater ever before. For me, that's probably the quote that comes to mind. Oh, so cool. Love that. And <laughs> I had Michael Menarek on the show not too long ago. Oh, great. Yeah, I, mean, I, I can only assume that the two of you know each other. We know each other very, very well. He's a dear of friend course. and he's um, a brilliant artist and teacher and entrepreneur of our entertainment business and he and his wife have been through a great deal in the last couple of years so he's a definite hero of mine yeah very cool well let's dig into this next section here and constantine of course you are an entertainer i'm an entertainer and i think that you'd agree that this industry can be one of the most subjective brutally honest and personally emotional industries in existence and you know as well as i that in order to create and have a successful career in this industry like you're having now takes a lot of dedication and hard work and while yes There's an outrageous amount of fun and excitement doing what we do. There are also our fair share of obstacles, challenges, and failures we are going to experience and we're going to have to move forward through. So tell us, what is one key challenge, obstacle, or failure you've experienced in your career? And how did you come out the other side better because of it? You know, I mean, I don't think there's just one. There's been so many. (laughs) I've been blessed to have a ton of success for sure. But with all of that, there have been many doors slammed in my face, many jobs I didn't get that I thought I was going to get. Even my experience on American Idol, I don't, I, I play to win. So free falling off the show one week when the whole world was watching back in Gee, it's 2005 or so, myself, Carrie Underwood, 30 million people a night, three nights a week for months and months and months, just a massive, massive show back then, you know, it was the only, it was the sort of only show in town then. And I I, I think I always knew Carrie Underwood would win the show, but I, you play to win, but, you know, to free fall off the show one week until sixth place or something that, that hurt, that was brutal. And But then I discovered, okay, now the work really begins. Okay, I'm like massively famous right now because it's not like I'm on the show in 2021. This is when the whole world was watching. I couldn't walk anywhere. I couldn't go anywhere. And really, literally, Australia, England, Asia, you know, everyone was watching live American Idol season four. It was just crazy town. And so I guess I sort of just strapped on my boots and got to work right then and there. But it it was devastating. It was devastating. It was devastating to lose the Tony. It was devastating to not get nominated for a Tony for Jekyll and Hyde. You know, when I was, you know, I won a myriad of other awards and accolades. But I think that sounds so superficial, but I'm competitive. I, I love to be a part of a a wonderfully, I don't know, a diverse and supportive community. But I grew up playing sports, you know, you want to win also, you know, I don't know how you, it's always silly, like when you watch these award shows and you people winning for best actor, it's like, no one's a better actor on that level. It's just about a particular performance and script and story that more people responded to. I mean, it's so subjective. It's like, how can you really rate like who's a better actor or something like that. I think things like that, the lo- lots of wins, but also lots of losses as, as along the way. Yeah, for sure. I can only imagine what it was like. Like you said, season four, American Idol, man, I remember watching you on TV and 
it's crazy. It was, it was the number one thing. I remember everyone that I knew, we made sure that we were home and watched American Idol live. Every, but that was everybody, every household, hey? Isn't that crazy? Yeah. And it was still a time when exactly like you had to be home to watch it. You yeah, could just DVR everything. <laughs> you weren't DVRing it or TiVoing it or whatnot. Like you were there to watch it. You talked about it the next morning at school or at work or with your family. Can you believe what so-and-so did yeah, yeah. or what Simon said or this or that? In a way, it was like a throwback to the golden age of television that Basically, my parents uh, got to experience when they probably first got a television in the 40s or 50s. And those shows that everyone in the world just sat around the dinner table watching in the millions and millions. It was a wonderful time. It was a wonderfully even innocent time. It was a program for everyone to watch in the family. There was someone for everybody. And I think I just was at the right place at the right time. I graduated a, a prestigious conservatory. I had toured with Rent. I was on Broadway. I had been in bands and TV shows and such. And I just really needed a job. I needed a gig. And I auditioned for the show on a total whim. I had never seen it before. I had Whoa. barely heard about it because, you know, back then we didn't really use the internet like we do today, of course. And they had only had three seasons. I was at conservatory. I was on tour. You knew American Idol, but I never watched it because, again, you, they, we didn't have that. We just didn't have that kind of, I don't know, habitual like taping shows or researching shows online or really talking much about it. I think when you're a performer, you're busy, you're working, you're training, yeah, you're, you're yeah. doing stuff, you're doing your own stuff. Yeah, totally. Did you know building industry relationships are the most important assets you need to create a long-lasting entertainment career? And don't take my word for it. Guest after guest here on the podcast have attributed some of their biggest career moments to their relationships. That is why you need to get yourself inside the You Booked It community. You'll learn what you need to do to get noticed and make sure your headshot stays in the callback pile so you can book the gig more consistently and create a successful career. Tap the link in the show notes or go to youbookedpodcast.com forward slash invite to get inside free today. Let's move on to a time that I like to call your spotlight moment that one <laughs> moment in time you realized yes i am going to be an entertainer for a living or maybe it was yes this is what i need to be doing in this industry tell us about that you know i always had terrible stage fright when i was a kid I, and i'm not just saying that like, i really did i would i clearly had a big singing voice and a lot of personality and whatnot and i would get all the singing parts in some kind of chorus piece or whatnot and uh, and then i would get that out there in front of an audience and i would just choke you know when i was young 9 10 11 12 whatnot and i guess just experience you just have to eventually get in front of people enough and just keep working and keep building a confidence and then eventually you get in front of a band and you grab that mic and the mm. girls kind of like it and the boys <laughs> kind of like it you're building the confidence and all of a sudden you're just off and going i think for me you know like i said my brother and sister were much older than me and they were almost like these mythical characters to me because they were out of the house and I grew up really by myself. And I think that first time I finally had the courage to join the like chorus in, in high school after being coerced by the, the, the choral teacher to join, getting that first big solo, I think it was Duke of Earl. Duke, 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 Duke of Earl, Duke, Duke, Duke of... And then I sang that song. As I, I walk through this world, nothing can stop the Duke of Earl. And you, you are my girl, and no one can hurt you. Oh, no. Oh, I, oh I'm going to love you. That whole thing, you know? And yeah. like people were like, wow! like they were just it was such a throwback tune a 50s tune and just i came out with the sunglasses and everyone went crazy 
they were like, holy shit, like you can really sing. And I was like, really? Thank you. And I won all these trophies. We went to this like big chorus competition and I, I honestly won like every trophy and it was just nuts. It was nuts. So I think that that was just like, you know, and I had great theater teachers and directors along the way where, you know, the kids I I did theater and music with, they were all really good. The competition was high and we had good teachers where they would only, they would put you in the ensemble until you were like an upperclassman, no matter who you were, how good you were, you know, you had to earn your way from the back to the front. And that Mm -hmm. was the best lesson anyone ever really taught me. Just having to earn my way and learn from the older kids. And that was, it's like in sports, like some of these, look, the you know, New York Yankees, obviously world famous baseball team. They have uh, a 16 year old kid that the whole world is talking about. I collect baseball cards <laughs> and, you know, the hobby is like exploded. So everyone is trying to get their hands on this like 16 year olds minor league cards jason dominguez yeah because his his cards are worth ridiculous this kid hasn't played yet he hasn't even played yet so the yankees could oh they could realistically elevate this kid by 17 18 years old to the pros to like and but they're gonna make him wait they're gonna make him wait they're gonna nurture him have him learn And then when he is ready, then he will play. So that was the best lesson that anyone really taught me coming up. There were a couple of those moments, you know, getting that trophy, getting in front of the crowds for the first time, getting that first lead in high school in a play. They were really big moments. Sure. For sure. Big moments. Yeah. I mean, it's great to have all those, you get those little teasers of success. And you see, this is the, this is what it could be. Yes, I'm getting closer. But yeah. Yeah. There's no denying that you have to put in the work. There's no getting around the work. Right. And I don't envy the kids nowadays. And I know I sound like, uh, I don't know if you guys have that progressive commercial, progressive insurance, (laughs) where it's like, don't act like your parents. And then they have all these like younger people like acting like their parents. (laughs) They're like, I was on the internet the other day. Was I hashtagging? And the guy's like, what? Yeah. And you just sound so old and stupid when you're like, I don't envy the kids these days, but I really don't because everything they do is about likes and follows and followers and pictures and who likes me and how many people are going to like my picture. And that sucks. That just sucks. I mean, I get it. It's part of my work too, but I don't know, you know. That just means that it's not about the work and it's only about getting famous and getting views and getting followers and getting subscribers. And we're not doing the work. We're not on a path that is, I don't know. Yeah. Get caught up in these micro moments. Everything is so short and so short lived. And you want, you know, a seven second video to absolutely go viral. And that can, you know, make a big difference in your overall life as well, which is crazy to think, but it's hard to play the long game when everything is so small right now. Truly, truly. And that's all I preach to uh, younger people. You had my colleague, Michael Manerik on, you know, I've done some master classes at his school. I often teach, I do a lot of coaching and for the young performers out there, look me up. I'm, you know, not everyone can teach that does what I do. And I don't know what it is. It's in my blood. I come from a long line of educators. I love to teach. I love to coach. I make people better. I know I can. I know I can pass something on to them to give them the tools to be better. But I don't want to teach them to be me. I don't want them to be a rock star or a a star. Like That's not how I got to where I am. What I'd rather see them be is someone that is valuable in many many areas because trust me starring in shows is cool but you don't get to star in every show you get to star in like maybe one show or two shows a decade if you're lucky and then there's a whole lot of downtime because it just doesn't work that way you know different with movie stars and stuff but as far as like broadway or whatnot you don't just jump from show to show to show to show like starring in all of them. But if you're a valuable talent that can sing, dance, cover roles, 
play principal roles, play supporting parts, cover different parts. You're a dancer. You're a, a person that can sing different parts. Make yourself valuable as possible. That's what I teach. Much cooler to be that. You know, it's like in sports, like that guy or gal that can play like multiple positions, can go in at any time in the day, a pressure situation, non-pressure situation, having sat for four games in a row, then having to play and still be successful. Be that person. Be the MVP. Not, I don't know, do the work for sure. Yeah, for sure. And yeah, I mean, I can relate to that a bit because a lot of my performance career is also you know, the swing life found me as well. You know, my, oh. my, my brain works well that way. And that's yeah. certainly not for everybody. And, but it's hard, but you know, sometimes it'll be quite a while sometimes before actually having to go do whatever the thing, whatever you get called to do, because someone got sick or injured, like in the middle of a show, but you just have to be ready to put that hat on and go do it. Like you did it yesterday. Oh, and you always have the least amount of rehearsal of anyone because I mean, it's just rare that you get to really work with the creative team or work with the other principal actors. You're maybe in a once a week rehearsal after a show opens, not right away. And you're like working with a stage manager or whoever or other understudies that have not been on either. So, yeah, it's a thankless gig. I couldn't do it. I know I couldn't do it. There's a guy, our friend Tony, his last name escapes me right now. But he is this freak. He was in Rock of Ages. He played every single part in the show. Whoa. He played every male part. He was literally redefined the word swing on Broadway. Basically, it had never been done before. He played Drew. He played Stacy. He played Dennis. He played Lonnie. He played Franz. He played Hertz. He did Joey Primo. He played, I mean, he played every single part in Whoa, the show. Crazy. And, and he, it was unreal. On, and he's basically doing the same thing in Come From Away right now. And his hard work paid off because they're about to film this huge special for Netflix of Come From Away. And because another colleague of mine was quite outspoken about the vaccines and some political stuff that were very different views than let's say most people in our business have he wasn't invited to be a part of the movie and now tony's getting bumped up to and getting like his big break out from like swing life to like starring in a netflix movie essentially whoa wild yeah unreal very crazy yeah and at, at 50 years old too yeah so cool let's piggyback on that spotlight question and let's talk about your number one booked it moment. Walk us through that day, the auditions and callbacks, if they happen to be a part of it. What was going on in your life? And what about that moment makes it your favorite booked it moment? <laughs> um, you know, it's funny. They spoke to me first about Rock of Ages when I was on American Idol way back in like mm. 2005, 2006. They had some early workshop L.A. productions, kind of like a bring your own costume. We're going to set up in this bar and do this kind of skit. It wasn't fleshed out. It was a big 80s mixtape mess at the time. Yeah, yeah. I After my time on Idol, I was developing a big TV show for ABC. I was doing a record. I was touring a bit. I was on a soap opera for a while. I went into the Wedding Singer on Broadway. Eventually, Rock of Ages came around and they were going to open an off-Broadway production of the show. I went to the last staged reading of it. I was not in it. It was not great. And I was just like, this is, I don't know. This show has so much potential, but it's just kind of missing something. So I went in. I met with them. Originally, they always wanted me to play Stacy Jacks, like the rock star character. Yeah. So I went to meet them at Bernard Telsey at the time, big casting agency, Telsey and Company. And Kristen, the director, came out and she's like, no, no, no. You're my Drew. You're not Stacy. You're Drew. I want you to read for Drew and just come in and just do the Drew stuff. And I was like, okay. Yeah. So... I came in and they, I never left the room. They kept me in there and they kept bringing in all these other people to read against me, you know, Sherry's and Lonnie's and everybody. And basically like 
They called my agent right away. They're like, we have to have him. And I actually had an offer to go into another Broadway show, a big, a big Broadway show for a big salary. Cause I was like, you know, kind of famous at the time and all of this. And I had been on the soap opera also after American Idol. And I was just trying to build my brand on Broadway. I had already done a supporting part. Yes, I wanted to play a lead, but I, you know, working Remember, Rock of Ages started off Broadway first. That money is basically non-existent. I mean, right. you know, you're making really just nothing. And it's tough. It's tough to even live in New York City for that kind of money. But I just felt like there was something amazing about this show. And me and them and the sort of wonder twin powers that we could activate together. And yeah, I booked it. And I'm so glad that I decided to take the job and it just became my baby. And now we're celebrating. We just celebrated 12 years since we opened on Broadway. We have a massive, massive concert coming up, a huge Rock of Ages all-star reunion with so many famous stars. We're going to be live on both coasts here in the States. You can get tickets really anywhere, stellartickets.com or rockofagesmusical.com. It's going to be incredible. Such a big reunion. And I think it's exactly like what people need right now is mm. just just some mid to late 80s rock and roll done yeah. done by the best party in Broadway history for sure. I think that's that was my booked it moment for sure and to see it become this you know by the time we got to Broadway and so many years later and for it to be this brand all over the world and where it's not only done in Australia but uh, four corners of the world and different languages and schools and community theaters and just you know a huge movie and just really a blessing to have really been a part of the original vibe of it for sure oh so cool well i think that kind of segues us right into what's going on in the present what projects are you working on right now what are you looking forward to and we've mentioned it a little bit with this pandemic how do you see the entertainment industry moving forward in the next couple of years Man, you know, I'm I'm so lucky that I worked on a bunch of cool projects before the shutdown. I had uh, put a few movies in the can. I have four movies right now that are either at streaming or coming to streaming or video on demand. Yeah, this movie, The Fifth Burrow, this movie, Chronicle of a Serial Killer with actually DMX, who just died, the mm. hip hop legend here in the States. He's He stars in the film. And I have this movie, Dark State by Tracy Luca that I'm out promoting right now that's coming to video on demand May 9th. And then Either Side of Midnight by Roger Spottiswood, a legendary 80s and 90s a film director picking and choosing cool indie films to do nowadays just a beautiful new york story that'll be coming to video on demand and it's hitting all the festivals right now so got a chance to be a part of some cool movies and uh, i put out an album over the shutdown it's called until i'm wanted you can check that out anywhere constantinemaroulis.com but it's available on all the streaming platforms uh, spotify you know, Apple Music, Google Play, Tidal. It's been getting tons of play on Sirius XM, my single All About You. It's my first original album in many years. I've just had the pleasure of singing other people's stuff for so long, but to get back in the studio and create a a rock and roll love letter until I'm wanted, it's been just a blessing. And it's been out since the summer of 2020 and all about you is getting played still for the last six months in full rotation at uh, Sirius XM. So very cool. We have this, like I said, this huge Rock of Ages concert coming up April 24th, StellarTickets.com. It's going to stream on Stellar, a huge platform here. It's going to be awesome. Just I'm actually flying to Los Angeles for it. I've been fully vaccinated for the last month or so plus and i'll be getting on my first flight in a long time so april 24th check that out and then i did this concert called reflections which is celebrating the 50th anniversary of the who's album who's next so we're doing the entire album of the who's next with this huge band it's a a multi-camera like rock and roll experience 
We're also covering the catalog. We're doing Tommy. We're doing Quadrophenia with oh. all these big Broadway singers. Myself, Justin Sargent from Spider-Man, Turn Off oh, the Dark. Oh, I know Justin. He's a friend of mine. Yeah. He's Very amazing. Cool. Yes. And uh, Mike Wartella from a ton of Broadway shows, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, Lana Gordon from Chicago and La Lion King. So that's going to stream also April 30th into May, early May. So you can go to the Rock projectlive.com and check out tickets to that but all of this stuff is on my website as well constantinemaroulis.com and oh man sounds like all these crazy things but i'm still hungry as ever thank god things are starting to open up a little bit my agent has got me some cool film and television opportunities we're not auditioning in person yet i hope we can because i always seem to do better that way but we're putting some cool projects on tape and um, I lost a dear friend over the shutdown. And it's it's been a very surreal experience coming to grips with him not being here anymore. But we press on and I was quite depressed. And I feel, I don't know, I feel rejuvenated. I feel happy again for the first time in a long time. And I'm really excited about the future. I think, yeah. I, I have a lot I still want to do. So I have a lot I still want to do. I, I'm, I'm hoping to get back out there and tour and even promote my album. But we're already working on the next album because I don't want there to be 10 years between this one and the last. Again, just chipping away, taking care of the family. I have a 10 year old at home. I missed her soccer game today because I was working on a film project. They were out there in the pouring rain and the mud. And they lost 3-2 to a tough team. Oh. And she was uh, she had a couple of assists. And uh, she was beating everyone up out there. She's a uh, tough player. And I would have given anything to be out there playing in the mud today. So I, I hope that's a memory that... Uh, and I'm talking muddy. Those games where <laughs> it's like out of a movie. And where the ball just like stops. Because it's just yeah. so much mud. <laughs> so it, sad to miss the game. But I'm pretty much a full-blown soccer dad now so i'm usually at them i don't miss much but uh taking care of my family and just that's it man just keeping the rock alive for sure right on it's very cool so cool that you've got you know so many irons in the fire always on a new project staying creative that's what it's all about yeah man that's what we like that's my greek my greek work ethic it's working hard hardly working but just just hustling always believe me i'd rather just be on a, a broadway show or a, a tv series and messing around with my baseball cards in my uh, downtime but until we can get back to some normalcy you just got to keep hustling and pivoting and teaching and doing whatever you have to do that's right very cool. Let's move on to one sure. of my favorite sections of the interview. I call it the Grease Lightning Round. All right. I am going to ask you a handful of questions. I want you to answer them as quickly and concisely as possible, one okay. after another. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right. First question. What was the one thing holding you back from committing to a career as an entertainer? Just fear. Fear and uh, insecurities. Yeah. Second question. What is the best piece of advice you have ever received? Don't try to be a star. Just work on getting better every single day. And all of that other stuff will come as it's supposed to. Yes. Third question. What is something that is working for you right now? Or if you'd like to go pre-COVID, what was working for you before our industry went on pause? Auditioning is such a weird thing. And I still have to audition. A lot of times I don't have to audition, but I still have to audition. And I felt like I was in such a groove and building such good momentum. And I have put enough time between being Constantine from American Idol or Constantine from Rock of Ages that they were finally starting to see me at film, television, and for other shows and tours mm. as just actor, you know? And it's hard work. It's great being known, but it's also a bummer sometimes. So I felt like I was building really great momentum and I felt like I was in a groove audition wise. Like I could go in there, be comfortable. I could do whatever I wanted to do in the room. And that takes decades. Some people yeah. are just naturally so good at, but it really takes decades and that's what it has. And so I feel really good about that, but that's, it's been a bummer that boom, it just shut down. 
for a while, yeah, you know? Yeah, for sure. And the fourth question, what is your best resource? Whether that is a book, a movie, a YouTube video, maybe a podcast or a piece of technology you found is helping your career right now. Still, my brother, my brother, Ethan, just a wealth of knowledge and experience in the industry taught me how to be my best manager, my best agent, taught me how to tackle this industry with a briefcase and a microphone to be an entrepreneur, to be interested in many different things and many different areas and always have that ability to pivot and to handle lots of things at once from being at the center of attention to being behind the scenes and making things happen and putting good people together. And it's worked in my producing life. It's worked in my songwriting and collaborating and whatnot. So still my brother is a big influence, but sure, I'm so much i absorb so much content and i'm constantly um you know i've got my ear to the grind so whether it's the internet as a tool or still so many great books that are incredibly knowledgeable sorry not a lightning answer there but uh, there's so many there's just so many good books and you just we have to read we can't forget to read yeah agreed and i'm glad that you brought you said your brother because i say it all the time that look in this industry, and it's really come up through so many of the interviews on this podcast, that it really boils down to really great industry relationships. And then on top of that, really understanding and wrapping your head around the business side of this industry. And those two things combined really do enable you to have a successful career. I agree. Absolutely. My mother uh, would say, sometimes it's not what you know, it's who you know. Mm. <laughs> and I tell young people in regards to an audition, the audition is not just in the room with the casting or director or whoever is auditioning you. The audition starts in the waiting room. The audition starts in the elevator. The audition mm. starts walking from the subway to the building. You never know who's walking next to you. You never know who's in the elevator with you. You never know who's listening in the waiting room, who's got spies here or there. Because as a producer, the one thing I want when someone walks in the room, do I trust them? Can I trust them? Can I trust them to do the job? If I hire them into my circle and my creative sacred place and space, will they be a positive member of this collaboration? The audition is not just about going in there and cranking out the song or the scene or whatever. The audition is all around you always. Everything is the audition. Just remember that because yeah. they're always watching, baby. Oh, such good advice. Worth rewinding and listening to that again, everybody. And the fifth question if you had to start your career from scratch, but you still had all the knowledge and experience you've collected from your career in this industry, what would you do or not do? Would you do anything differently or would you keep it the same? Yeah, it's so easy to be like, oh, I wouldn't change anything because that's what made you who you are. But yeah, okay, since we're playing, yep, um, yep. I, I didn't have a traditional path. I didn't go from high school right to college or to conservatory drama school whatnot after high school i kicked around a little bit i played in some rock and roll bands i was working full-time and hustling doing some maybe not legal things as well and getting into <laughs> some stuff and uh, doing what i had to do but playing in bands and auditioning and honing my craft building life experiences and whatnot and i really didn't get off to drama school until i was 22 or 23. so i got a bit of a late start and granted i had done some cool jobs and whatnot but no one knew who the hell i was yet and i had all this raw talent but i didn't have the training yet so hmm. yes we're all on our different paths and i probably maybe would be in the same place maybe not but it would have been nice to dig into my schoolwork a little more seriously in grade school and high school and it would have been nice to have had one of those big time college experiences like going off to some big school where i could train and study as an actor but also have that rah-rah kind of college experience yeah, yeah, yeah. um and i i, I 
basically the streets of New York became my first few years of college. And then I went off to Boston Conservatory, Berkeley College of Music and all that. And I had played in bands and whatnot. And I was, I had life experiences, but sometimes I wish that, yeah, I dug in more seriously earlier on for sure. Yeah. It would be interesting to, to see, I don't know if I would be any you know, better off or worse off or what, so. Yeah, yeah. And the last question, what is the golden nugget knowledge drop you've learned from your successful career you'd like to share with everyone? Just be nice. You have to be someone that some that people want to work with. It's great to sing awesome and to look great and to think you're a great actor, but people just want to work with good people. They want you to be nice. They want you to work hard and be kind. We're all a bunch of insecure little brat actors and performers. That's <laughs> probably why yeah. we do it in the first place. So we so easily fall into this kind of mean girl mentality and it permeates uh, our community, I don't know, in a big way. And it's sad. It's sad. But there's a lot of that mean girl kind of just behavior and I won't stand for it anymore. But if we're all just nice and supportive and not afraid to tell each other how great we think they are and you know even if it's hard for you to say it's it goes such a long way to be like dame you were awesome tonight dude you killed it i was so happy i got to be in the audience and and you know, watch you go on and, and kill it and i'm so happy for you dude it's not very hard to do no. You know, it goes such a long way. Just be nice. Honestly, it's really simple. Just be nice. Yeah, yeah you know? so good. And to wrap up this interview, Constantine, it is time to give yourself a plug. Where can we find you? How do our listeners connect with you? <laughs> is there anything you want to promote? I've probably promoted all the stuff that I'm up to during the podcast already. But look, I'm so lucky and fortunate to have a few fun things coming up april 24th big rock of ages concert rock of ages musical.com our all-star reunion concert live on both coasts new york and los angeles so many great stars from over the years rock of ages alumni members of tenacious d members of the dan band huge stars not just the music of rock of ages music of the era as well that's that was always meant to be in the show that's not in the show things and music from guns and roses other tunes Really cool. It's going to be awesome. Go to rockofagesmusical.com or stellartickets.com or constantinemaroulis.com for all the ins and outs of everything I'm up to. Got a couple of movies out. Got the new album out. Until I'm Wanted. Check it out. Follow me at Constantine Maroulis on Instagram. Let's stay in touch. If you're a young performer, you want to connect about a path to success in the professional world, I can help. I know I can help. I, I do a great deal of coaching and, and mentoring, and it's my pleasure to do so. I'd love to connect with you and hear about your goals, and let's see if we can build a plan to make you better. So stay in touch. Let's stay in, engaged. Everyone be safe. We're going to get back to work, and people are going to need us more than ever now to lift them up and to create a distraction and a wonderful evening of magical experiences whether it's a rock and roll show or a theatrical experience so chin up we're gonna be there uh soon enough back to where we belong up on the stage and uh rocking and rolling and uh, having a sexy old good old-fashioned time right on and for everyone listening out there i put the links to everything constantine just said into the description of this episode so you can easily connect with him and all of his projects and also be sure to share this podcast with your fellow entertainers coaches teachers arts and entertainment educators and anyone you know aspiring to create a career in the entertainment industry you Booked It is the number one resource of expertise on how to actually create a successful entertainment career. Case in point, everything Constantine just dropped here today. If you enjoyed this episode, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss the next one. Constantine, thank you so much for being here. I'm so glad we had the opportunity to connect. And really, it's been my pleasure, Dane. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, big fan of the show. 
and uh, look forward to uh, staying connected and seeing you maybe uh, over there in uh, Aussie land soon enough or you over here. And it's been a pleasure being here with you. So thank you for having me. Likewise. Thank you so much for listening today. If you enjoyed this episode and want more like it, be sure to smash that subscribe button. Also, be sure to join the You Booked It community. Inside, you can connect with your people, build industry relationships, unlock unlimited masterclasses, and access the tools and training you need to create a sustainable career momentum. Get your invite link right now, tap the link in the show notes, or head over to youbookedpodcast.com forward slash invite, and we'll see you there.